Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. This video is another update with regards to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. In this series of videos, I'm looking at the financial implications on the global economy. And I'm delighted to tell you that this video has been made in conjunction with The Daily Upside, a free finance and business newsletter that you can sign up for using the link below. And in today's video, I want to focus in on the Russian economy. So far in this series, I've been looking at the global economy and what the impacts on the Western world will be from all of the sanctions that have been introduced. But in today's video, I want to turn the tables and look at what's happening within Russia. The strength of the Russian economy is based around all of its raw materials. Russia is a huge landmass and has large amounts of oil, natural gas and lots of rare metals that are used in a variety of processes around the world. The sanctions that were brought in at the end of February are designed to stop the Russian economy being able to transact with the rest of the world as much as it used to. And those sanctions are now starting to bite. And we are seeing problems occurring in the Russian economy and those problems are escalating rapidly. So in today's video, I want to run through a variety of different metrics. We'll have a look at what's happening with inflation and there are some really concerning issues right now on a weekly basis. We'll then go on to look at the Russian ruble, which has been badly affected by all of these sanctions and the impact on the trade for Russia. We'll have a look at the details of those sanctions and the impact that it's having on both Russian exports and imports. I'll talk about the problems that are going on in real life Russia right now, the shortages that are starting to occur in supermarkets. I'll give you an update on what's happening with regards to the head of the central bank, who's a very high profile female that's been working closely with President Putin over the last nine years. We'll look at the revised outlook for Russia for 2022. And then finally, I'll wrap up with my summary as to what I think is likely to happen over the next three to six months in Russia and the impact that that's going to have on the global economy. So before we get started, I'd like to ask you as usual to give me a thumbs up at some point during this video if you're enjoying the content and also to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you'd like to support the channel, please have a look in the description below at the Buy Me A Coffee and Patreon links. The annual rate of inflation in Russia for the 12 months to the 18th of March 2022 is 14.53%. Now, in itself, that is an extremely high level of inflation. We've talked a lot on this channel about inflation all around the world, and double-digit inflation spells trouble for any economy. Now, this is the highest rate of inflation that's been seen in Russia since November 2015, if we have a look at this chart, it shows how inflation has been moving over the last 12 months. So you can see that there has been a steady increase in the rate of inflation since April 2021. So a year ago, Russian inflation was running at around about 5.5% and we're now closer to 15%. So there's been a significant increase over the last 12 months. But that really isn't the story here. The message here is how inflation has started to move since Russia invaded Ukraine. Inflation increased 1.93% in the seven days to March 18. And the week before that, it increased 2.09%. And the week before that, it increased 2.22%. Now, just to put this into perspective, the target rate of inflation in the USA and the UK is 2% for a whole year. That's what economists believe is a healthy rate of inflation over a 12-month period. We're currently seeing 2% increases in inflation per week in Russia. Now, if you were to do a very rough and ready annualized calculation of 2% per week by multiplying it by 50, and I know I'll get a lot of comments about this because that isn't how you would annualize the rate of inflation. There'd be lots more calculations going into it than that. But just for the sake of ease, I want to keep it simple because I know a lot of people who watch this channel are looking to learn more about how finance and the economy works. So if we multiply 2% by 50, that would get you to 100%. So you'd be looking at 100% inflation if rates continue at this level. Now, the actual rate of inflation would be significantly higher than 100% if we continue to see 
2% growth per week because of the compound nature of pricing. But the point here is that this inflation rate is out of control. This is hyperinflation levels and is unsustainable and will lead to a breakdown in the Russian economy. So the Russians need to do something to try to combat this inflation. They have got to stop this runaway inflation irrespective of what's happening with oil exports and gas exports and all of the other commodities that Russia has in abundance, if inflation carries on at the current rate of growth, it will destroy the Russian economy. No question about that. Before we move on, I just wanted to say a few words about today's sponsor. The Daily Upside is a free newsletter that is published before the markets open every single weekday. Now, I'm frequently asked by viewers where I source all of my material from, and I try to avoid the mainstream news channels. And The Daily Upside offers different types of stories and a level of detail that you just don't get in the mainstream press. And the great thing about it is it's absolutely free. You can sign up for a subscription using the link below. I've been reading it for the last few months and I've found it to be really helpful and informative. They recently ran an article looking at the insurance risks relating to what's happening in Ukraine. And for me, that's triggered a whole new thought on a video. And I'm currently putting together an extensive video on the insurance costs of the Ukraine war as a result of that article. So I would definitely recommend adding that to your daily news roundup. The immediate impact of this increase in inflation has been felt by shoppers all across Russia. The price of everything has increased rapidly and is now causing panic buying and shortages. The price of sugar has increased by 15% since the start of March. The price of tomatoes is up 17%. Bananas are up 16%. Eggs have increased in price by 25%. And producers are warning that prices could go up another 40%. Non-food items have also increased dramatically with automobile prices up 17%, televisions up 22%, and mobile phones 12%. In addition to the price increases, the sanctions have also led to shortages of products that are imported into Russia. And we're seeing images of large queues forming around stores and empty shelves that are reminiscent of what we saw from the Soviet Union in the early 1990s. Some shops are now rationing the amount that shoppers can buy, and this is causing panic, and there are videos on social media of skirmishes and scuffles breaking out in stores, people fighting over bags of sugar and flour. In addition to food shortages, there are also now concerns about shortages of medicine. Medicine such as insulin, which is required for the treatment of diabetes, has been disappearing from pharmacy shelves. And polls indicate that Russian doctors are facing shortages of more than 80 medicines at pharmacies. To compound the problem further, we're also seeing a lot of people being put out of work. International businesses have been leaving Russia and closing down all of their facilities, which means that all of those workers are no longer in employment. But it's not just the international businesses that have been laying people off. All of the flights have now been grounded, so everybody who works for the airline industry and the associated sectors no longer have any form of employment, and there are a variety of other sectors that have been hard hit by these sanctions also. So the situation as it sits right now is really grim for the Russian people. They're looking at rising prices, food shortages, medical shortages, and at the same time, either they've already lost their job or they're at risk of losing their employment. So from the people of Russia's point of view, the invasion of Ukraine has been an absolute disaster. This has put them into a much worse situation than they were a few months ago. The international response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine was to apply a variety of sanctions against the country. And those sanctions were designed to hurt the finance and the economy of Russia. And the impact of those sanctions has been devastating. The initial focus was on the international payment systems. So SWIFT, which is used predominantly by governments and companies all around the world for moving money internationally, was closed off to the Russian authorities and the majority of large Russian businesses. Following on from the payment sanctions, a variety of other sanctions were also introduced, targeting various sectors, and countries such as the US and the UK declared that they no longer wanted to buy any energy products directly from Russia. 
In addition to the official sanctions, we have also seen a variety of unofficial sanctions. So the response from business and industry has been highly negative towards Russia's invasion, and most companies have come out and stipulated that they no longer want to do any business with Russia, and companies that had facilities and operations within Russia have announced that they want to close them down and no longer continue with their investment activities. The impact of these sanctions has meant that it's now impossible for the Russian authorities and Russian companies to be able to raise any new capital. They can't raise any debt or equity going forward, but they're also struggling to make payments and to do any business. Russia imports a lot of goods and materials and food, and it's now struggling to be able to get those imports because some of the shipping entities don't want to deal with Russia, the container companies don't want to deal with Russia, so it's causing them a major supply problem. So it's not just a financial issue, they can afford to buy things, but some of the companies now no longer want to do any business with Russia. And that's why we're seeing shortages of various products in Russia, because they can't actually take delivery of all of the items that they're used to putting onto the shelves. Now, one of the major problems for Russia here is that these sanctions will not just be in place whilst this conflict goes on. These are likely to stay in place for many years. When Russia invaded Crimea back in 2014, a variety of sanctions were put in place against them, and some of those sanctions still exist. So this is likely to run for at least two to three to four, maybe five years Possibly these sanctions could be in place forever. So this is a highly damaging period for the Russian economy. They were previously an important part of the global supply chain, and they also bought a lot of things from the rest of the world. Now that they've become isolated and nobody wants to deal with them, it's going to be a big problem for Russia because it's great to have lots of natural resources and minerals and oil, but consumers today want other items and you can't automatically source all of those things at home. So this is going to change the economy of Russia, but it's also going to have a massive impact on the standard of living and the cost of living for everybody within Russia. Inflation and interest rates have been a major problem for Russia over the last 10 years or so. The head of the Russian Central Bank has been in charge for nine years and has been working on the inflation interest rate conundrum for the whole period that she's been in charge. This graph shows interest rates and inflation dating back to 2013. And you can see that at the start of 2015, both inflation and interest rates were at incredibly high levels. But over the last 10 years, we have seen a progressive reduction in both inflation and interest rates have moved down steadily alongside that. And the target rate of inflation in Russia has been set at 4%. You can see that in 2017, 2018, it was down below that rate. And again, at the start of 2020. And you can also see that the impact of this war has been devastating on both inflation rates and the rate of interest. On the 28th of February, the Russian Central Bank increased the interest rate in the country from 9.5% to 20%, more than double. That was done to reflect the fact that the conflict had already started at that point and they were essentially working within a war economy. Now, the head of Russia's central bank, Elvira Nabiolina, had made it her life's goal to bring down the rate of inflation. And it is rumoured that as soon as the war was announced, she tendered her resignation and no longer wanted to be involved in the Russian central bank. Her resignation was apparently refused by President Putin, who ordered her to stay. And in fact, she has now been nominated for a new five-year term. Jumping back to this graph, you can see that all of the hard work that has been put in over the last 10 years or so has been completely destroyed by this war. And it's likely going forward that we will see the rate of inflation going higher. It's currently at 14.5%, but it's likely to carry on rising. And it's also likely that we will see interest rates getting up above 20%. The announcement of Russia's invasion of Ukraine has had a negative impact on the Russian ruble. This chart shows the ruble against the US dollar over the last 12 months. And you can see that the exchange rate was relatively stable for a long period of time at around about 75 rubles to one dollar. If we look at the chart over the last month, you can see that at one stage the exchange rate fell to 150 rubles to a dollar and has now come back down to around about 100 rubles to the dollar. 
Now, there's a lot of variable factors that are going into this exchange rate right now. Historically, the Russian central bank was supporting the exchange rate. So this is a floating currency rate. So it's set by the market. And what the Russian central bank will have been doing historically is as and when they saw any pressure on the ruble price, they would have gone into the international markets and bought rubles, and that would keep the price relatively stable. So that would explain why the rate historically has been sat at around about 75 rubles to $1. As soon as the war was announced, the Russian central bank abandoned the policy of supporting the ruble because it would have been far too expensive and also they no longer had access to their international currency reserves. As part of the sanctions, all of Russia's overseas assets have been frozen. So all the $640 billion worth of assets that they built up to cover themselves for situations like this were no longer available to them. So that meant that the ruble went to an entirely free float. And that's why we saw the price fall dramatically. Now, the price has fluctuated around significantly because on a daily basis, we're hearing different stories. So initially, when the sanctions were introduced, it looked likely that all of the Western world was going to announce that it no longer wanted to buy oil from Russia. However, the EU, which is entirely dependent on natural gas from Russia and also buys a lot of oil, decided that it couldn't cut off those supplies overnight without causing major problems within their own economies. So we're still seeing a lot of business that's going through for the international energy market for Russia. So that's why the ruble has stabilized and come back down to around about 100 to the dollar. But as we move forward, this exchange rate could move anywhere on a daily basis. We've recently heard that President Putin has announced that all future payments for gas will have to be made in rubles. And he's done that to protect the value of the ruble. He is trying to get some demand for ruble from all of these international parties, which would then mean that the value would increase. And that might take it back towards the 75 rubles to $1 level. However, if the EU announces that it's no longer wanting to buy any energy, from Russia, which at some point it may well do that, then that could send the exchange rate plummeting. So maintaining the value of the ruble is really important to the strength of their economy, because if it deteriorates further, then those exports will get more expensive. That will raise prices at home, which fuels inflation, which means that interest rates have to go up and it becomes a really vicious circle for anybody living in Russia. And it's a really difficult situation to break away from for Russia because everybody is stopping doing business with them. Then there is less demand for the ruble and therefore the value of the ruble will fall. Simple economics tells you that when demand for something falls, then the price of that item will also fall. And that's what's happening with the ruble here. Nobody wants to buy it and therefore in the international currency markets, it's less valuable and therefore for the people of Russia, it's a disaster because it means everything that they're buying is becoming more expensive. So what's the outlook for the Russian economy for the rest of 2022? Well, to answer that question, we would really need to know how long the invasion of Ukraine is going to go on for. The longer it goes on, the more damage it will have on the Russian economy. Firstly, there's the cost of the conflict, and it's impossible to know how much this war is costing Russia on a daily basis. I recently posted a video showing research that estimated that it was anything up to $20 billion per day. But even if it isn't 20 billion, even if it's 10 billion or 5 billion or 1 billion a day, whatever it is, it's a lot of money. And it's causing the Russian economy problems because it's money that they weren't budgeting to spend and therefore they will have less resources by the end of this war. So that's the actual cash cost of the war. But in terms of the business costs and the cost of the economy, they are far, far greater. The business cost of this war to Russia has been devastating. They've been building relations with multinational firms from all around the world over the last 25 years. And they've got lots of joint ventures within the country. They've got lots of operations and plants. And they've got big oil and gas facilities that they built in conjunction with the majors. And all of that is now being unwound. A lot of these companies are saying they no longer want to continue. They no longer want to invest in Russia. So they've just wasted 30 years of growth in the space of four weeks. They have destroyed everything that they've been working towards in a really short space of time. So that's going to be damaging for the economy. But there's a direct economic impact of that because all the workers 
who were working for those companies have now been laid off. There is no longer any future investment plans. So all of the growth that would have come from developing new oil fields, new gas fields, building more cars, all of those issues, that's all gone. And then you've got the direct impact on the economy right now because of the sanctions. That's increasing prices. That's causing shortages. It led to an increase in interest rates and inflation. And the estimate right now is that we will see a fall in GDP of 8% in Russia in 2022. Now, that compares to growth of around 4% previously. So that is a huge swing. We're seeing a country going from healthy economic growth to a major recession. An 8% fall in GDP in a year is a big recession. But if this conflict carries on, if this goes on for another few months or even a year, then we could see the GDP fall even more than that. We could see double digit falls in GDP or even worse. And as that happens and as the country gets into a more difficult situation, the value of the ruble is likely to fall further and therefore inflation will go higher. Interest rates will need to be increased even more and we will have the hyperinflation runaway economy that we've seen in places such as Venezuela and Argentina, which will destroy all of the value that's been built up in Russia over the last 30 years or so. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, clearly what's going on in Russia right now is an absolute disaster. From an economics point of view, if you're looking at this as a business case, this is your worst case scenario. Since the breakup of the USSR, Russia has been looking to capitalize on the raw materials within the country and to build itself as a superpower in terms of business. And it's attracted a lot of investment. It's managed to persuade big companies such as BP and Shell and Exxon to invest into its oil and gas fields. It's invited lots of brands from around the world, such as McDonald's and Burger King and Ikea and Ford. And it's been developing joint ventures and product with those companies. And all of that has been completely undermined by the invasion of Ukraine. We are seeing 30 years of work being wiped out over a period of weeks. This is an absolute disaster. If this was a business that you'd invested into, you would definitely be calling for the chief executive to be fired immediately. But unfortunately, it's a country and it doesn't quite work the same as the world of business. But the fundamental takeaway here from this video is that what's going on in Russia right now is going to be very damaging to their economy and it's going to have a long lasting impact. The sanctions that have been brought in are really starting to bite. Russia are now realizing that they've got very few options in terms of their business partners. And in the long term, they will lose even more business. We talked recently about Italy, who are setting up facilities for floating liquefied natural gas to replace the gas pipelines that are coming from Russia. And it's likely that other countries will follow suit. I'm sure Germany will be looking at similar measures and other countries across Europe will be looking to get to a point where they don't buy anything from Russia. So once they get to that situation, Russia will have a much smaller global community to be able to sell its assets and resources to. And that will damage the economy. Today, everybody wants to work in the global economy. That's how business operates. You want to sell as much as you can for as high a price as you can. Limiting your market will always reduce your prices and mean that you have limited growth. So this is really bad news for Russia, really poor decision making from a business point of view. In terms of what the impact on the global economy will be, it will also have a damaging impact because Russia supplies a lot of raw materials that are needed in variety of industries and businesses. And we may be able to source some of those from elsewhere, but it's going to be a limited market and it will drive up prices. So therefore we will see price increases in a variety of sectors over the next three months, six months, nine months, two years, five years. And that will mean less profit for companies. It will mean things become more expensive and will put more pressure on inflation. And therefore, we'll have to have higher interest rates, which puts more pressure on anybody who's got debt, such as a mortgage. So there is a direct knock-on impact of what Russia is doing now for the global economy. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. You found it interesting, informative and educational. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already.